Well, I was going to say that he probably thought like 80 years, but um, but I you guess it'll take 80 years 10? to get to the robots making everything, essentially. Yeah. No well, way. I'm we're thinking ten, that that's what he years thought. Away. I'm, I, we're way more than 80 years away. We're 10 years away, but anyway. <laughs> well, okay. destroyed the world. I, so there are these little robots that they made that they use machine learning and they get them to play soccer. And it's kind of silly, but to me, that's a pretty big indication, like how well they can get those little robots to play soccer. If they can get robots to play soccer pretty well based on machine learning, I feel like that could translate to making robots do a lot of other types of jobs. Like, and if they could somehow use machine learning to make robots just be able to walk around in the world, like that's just, really the key. If you can make a robot that can just- We're on the tech, verge of that. That's what, what I'm saying. If you can get a robot saying, that can like, like walk around a house and like have some like understanding of like walls and house and how to navigate that space, then we're there. Are you in favor of UBI, Aaron, I'll let you go first. Um, no, I was not Yang Gang because maybe he talked about this. I don't think I really gave too much attention to Andrew Yang because he was poor. He was, I was already like he committed was to Sanders. Obviously, you know, <laughs> that, that was like problem number one. He's Asian. I don't, you know, other than that, can I overlook that? Not really. And then the next thing he's talking about, like fucking uh, Include UBI. Include that in yeah, the Reddit no. post, definitely. <laughs> but, no, I did have an issue she's, with Obviously Yang she's joking. Yeah, obviously <laughs> she's you. joking. So um, what is it like a philosophical, what, what, is the, what is the reason behind it? Is it because you feel like if we give people UBI, we're going to be further away from the communist revolt? Mm -mm. What is the... The UBI is actually a pretty like ideological uh, or like I've seen it uh, like proponents of UBI all the way from like Milton Friedman. Milton Friedman supported basically gutting sure, all yeah. social safety nets in place of just a UBI and like cash transfers to people because you can spend it better than these bureaucratic mechanisms Negative that the state tries to provide tax, for you. Yeah. yeah, so that's what like Milton Friedman cha championed all the way to MLK, you know, a of civil course. rights activist and somebody who was you know, in a lot of ways, a champion of the poor and the impoverished and uh, had very staunch critiques of capitalism and he championed U UBI, but in concert with a robust so social safety net. So I'm not like 100% opposed to an, a UBI, but to me, like in, with the way that money circulates in our economy, I'm like, how would this not just go to like, if your landlord hears that you have 600 extra dollars a month, how is your rent not just going to go up $600 a month? And then your that's UBI the, is gone. You know, That's the conservative libertarian argument that people are always throwing at me. So it's what interesting to, to hear you say that. Well, because that's my the, critique of, of it is like, I don't see how it's not just going to end up going upward, you know? Right. We control, I mean, we control inflation, obviously, through the Federal Reserve. I mean, a lot of people will say they're doing a terrible job of it right now, and I would agree, because obviously we've got a lot of inflation now, but we have, a de an, ins we have an institution that's dedicated to controlling inflation. So let's say we could, let's say we, we, I could provide some evidence that inflation wouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. Is that your only, is that your only gripe against UBI? Not complaint. just inflation, but that it won't be skimmed off by somebody who you have to give it to. Do you know what I mean? Well, you, look, you have to give money. You have, like, technically, you have to work now to give money to a landlord to live or to a bank for if you have a mortgage, if you own a mm -hmm. home. So, I mean, you're doing that already. I don't, what is the. I guess, yeah, like, it is this, like, worry about, like, immediate, like, hyperinflation of, like, okay. the areas that it's instituted. So, if I saw evidence, like, I've seen a different very proposal. Very libertarian attitude. I very like, libertarian. Is, it's <laughs> well, I know because when I was talking about like communism earlier and stuff like that, like the first examples that you're going to are like the USSR and the command economies. And I'm like, no, that's not really like the flavor of like communism or socialism or like leftism that I really champion. I, mm -hmm. I really would like it to be a lot more like communitarian. And I guess there, I probably do have a lot of overlap with like um, libertarians in terms of like personal liberty, not so much like economic uh, policy goals, I don't think. But I did see one iteration of this policy goal proposed as like, you could offer uh, welfare recipients, like, would you like to have access to like WIC and unemployment and like all these different kind of like voucher programs through the state? Or if you didn't want to take any of that, you could just take cash transfers and you could take a UBI. You know, if it was a policy like that, I would be interested in an experiment like that, where as opposed to like, if you need federal or like a federal assistance or statewide assistance, um, instead of naturally having to like go through, you know, th all of the kind of red tape that welfare can kind of like entail or whatever, if it could just be as simple as I don't want to deal with all the bureaucracy, I just want my 
$800 a month. I'd be really interested to see how like that plays out. You know, if people would actually use that properly. Okay. Do you have a, do you have a take Cherry? Are you against UBI or in favor of UBI? Um, I am hopeful. I'm, how can I put this? I'm against Andrew Yang. I don't like Yang. I feel like he's probably poisoned UBI in my mind, but I do think that I would absolutely be open to UBI. I just want better people to explain it to me, to thoroughly explain it to me. I want to take like Elizabeth Warren and put her on UBI and like wow. you do all the math. You let me know how it's going to work out. What's going to tell me what, uh, what like, uh, what is it called? What? what is it called when you're a committee? Tell me what committees we need to incorporate now to to help safeguard us, to make sure UBI doesn't turn into a bad thing. And then I'll be on board. But the fact that it came from Yang, the motherfucker had, oh, I'm sorry. He had <laughs> math as, as his like slogan. I just, everything about Yang is too cringe to me. I want to okay. throw him out, but I'd like oh, to yeah. keep UBI. Just more information, more looking into it before I say, yeah, give me UBI now. And for the audience, I think math meant make America think harder, right? Something like that. Yeah, make yeah, America think harder. Acronym. Isn't that so cute? You're, so Cherry's like, I like the idea, but this guy's too cringe for me to support him. So get him out of here. I need a better yeah. package. I almost well, rejected UBI because of him. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We've had the Scott Stanton on our channel. He's a, a good UBI proponent. And we've talked to him. So... I mean, you could listen to that talk. He he fights back against a lot of the arguments. He has a really interesting take on the inflation question, which is obviously uh, the wealthy have a way of hiding their their income from taxes, right? Avoiding and taxation. And the poor don't, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. But the wealthy can't hide their income away from inflation. <laughs> so True. you could actually structure UBI so there was maybe 5% inflation I'm, and, the, no, and the UBI kept you. up with the inflation and it would actually deal with income inequality at the same time. I mean, they have ways that is like pre-planned. Obviously it's a gamble, but you, you will have seen a lot of people who had money. Um, they want to take it either out of the bank. They don't want to hold on to money if they know that inflation is going to happen. So you'll see them do stuff like invest in property, um, invest of course. in uh, in other areas that it doesn't seem like they've held on to their money, but that like you wait a generation or something, you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> they did. Uh, <laughs> they they made out good while other people didn't have the opportunity. Why? Well, I, I think these ideas are interesting. I'm not sure that I trust uh, like a lot of the UBI people have, I think, more faith in government institutions than I personally have. So mm -hmm. I think the ideas are interesting. I don't know that I am in favor of giving that much power to the government but i'm interested Adam, here, in UBI. here's my shit test for the guy you had on is he mm -hmm. a proponent of mmt what guy uh the, the guy who you said has like a lot of explanations scott for how yeah scott Sand. Yes. is he an mmt head yes i knew it <laughs> <laughs> i fucking knew it an mmt head huh yeah so you I want to talk you're... about like forget the cult of the yang gang okay people who like mmt mmt huh? uh -oh. no i'm not i actually don't know nearly enough about it i just know that every proponent who every person who has this who gets the pitch made to them it's like fucking it's like the timeshare of like economic proposals because they act like holy shit you guys i've just heard about this thing it's called mmt and it's going to change your life and the way that you view like the entire economic order mm -hmm. because the people who hear about it i almost never hear like critics of it you know what but is, i've not looked into it mmt i mean i hear a lot of critics of mmt like i understand audience. mmt <laughs> we talk about mmt i i think that a lot of communists have adopted mmt wrongly thinking it's the way to get to the communist utopia i'm not one of those people obviously for cherry's question though she said what is mmt it's it stands for modern monetary theory and it's basically uh money printer go burr and you can just print all the money that you fucking <laughs> okay, want so and the country will be fine and i'm really curious how this works because it sounds amazing you know talk about like idealistic i'm like this sounds great please tell me it wouldn't lead to like instant hyperinflation well, okay, and, like oh, mass for, poverty for, first of all that is a massive straw man of mt <laughs> i would like i like to say it's a, it's a hyperbole <laughs> okay well but it's still a straw man hyperbole it is because i definitely that's what i'm saying like i have a very impoverished understanding of what mmt is other than it's literally modern monetary theory and right. i just know it has a lot more to do with like 
basically the, the one principle that i know is that like right now the common knowledge for americans is that we um tax and then we spend and they're like it's actually the, the reverse the government basically spends and then they tax you to like pay for it so why Correct. not like, just yeah. you know print more Look, money you've got you know? some well no well obviously inflation is the is what's standing in the way of printing more money the and resistance in printing more money is inflation and so. i know we have we have things that we do to prevent inflation from going crazy a lot of people like to look at of the economy and be like yeah. oh my god inflation so bad like bro do you know how much worse it could be <laughs> We control we control the money supply via the Federal Reserve. So, Adam, would but, you be in favor of us going back to the gold standard? Hell no, <laughs> that would be the stupidest thing America could do. Are you in agree. favor of the gold standard? No, I'm not. Okay. I just wondered yeah. if you were because, like, Please, that's no. uh, uh, like I hear kind of efforts about like how to you know manage inflation. Even though I think that this contribute, there's evidence that obviously that contributes to inflation. Is like we need to go back to the fucking gold standard. So I was just curious. Right. No, Adam's a yeah. huge MMT guy. So no way he's going it. back well, to the gold I, standard. I, yeah, of course. Why? Well, just the thing is, the the problem with MMT is the same problem I have with like the feminist label because a lot of feminists are man haters. A lot of MMT people are stupid communists. <laughs> so it's uh, like it's it's difficult i think there are obviously i think the mmt people understand the monetary system better than most like the legitimate ones but most people don't most people are using mmt as a way to kind of cover for massive spending that just could never take place it would be totally inflationary yeah the 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 thing that you have to concentrate on with spending obviously is material resources this is the thing that drives me crazy is because like and let, let me make let me make a pitch why you should be somewhat interested in mmt aaron let's hear we, it let's hear the we, elevator pitch for it okay so we have a thing that we talk about all the time about the deficit ceiling and the budget and social security we're not going to be able to afford all of these um unpaid entitlements right you've heard mm -hmm. this again and again from the republicans right so the republicans are they're very interested in managing how much money is in the account okay none of them are considering well what do we what is that money supposed to buy what are what are elderly people going to want they're going to want things like doctors nurses uh, old folks homes uh cars <laughs> self-driving cars right mm -hmm because they can't drive anywhere. There's all these re real resources that they want. So when the Republicans are focused on the money in the account and they're not thinking about the things that we need to buy that money, well, that, that could be inflationary. Like if, they, if nobody concentrates on what we need and you know, nobody pays for education and it turns out there's three doctors in the future, there's plenty of money in the bank account, but there's a million or a hundred million old people t that are only going to be serviced by three doctors. It doesn't matter how much money is in that account because we're going to be screwed. So you know what's crazy? A lot of the conversation, just to finish up here, about mm -hmm. the finances of uh, of our country are totally devoid from the reality of the situation. So once you start thinking about that, the real resources that are needed. You start looking at the economy completely differently. And also a lot of the grandstanding that the political class does, like obviously Nikki Haley in the GOP debate was talking about, oh, you know, we, we can't afford this. But she's not really talking about anything substantive if she's just talking about the money. Also said, um, yeah. when I tell my father-in-law who grew up in Croatia with socialist Yugoslavia that people like straight rate exist, he gets super pissed. <laughs> I mean, she seems very yeah. libertarian, very mm -hmm. individualist. None of the things you would think of as a classic communist archetype. Am I so, hiding my power level, Adam? I don't, oh, yes. I don't know. You tell us. <laughs> is that what it is? Do you explain how to explain that? Well, uh, no. I mean, you do. You have an individualist outlook, which I'm in favor of. I mean, you you're in favor of fighting for the working class, which yeah, I'm we in basically favor of. agree. Adam, sounds like you're a communist. That's a, that's the well. This is a, this wow. is my contention here. I like some. You're obviously against UBI, but wouldn't UBI be just give mm. power, uh, negotiation power to all workers? I'm not against UBI. I just need. I think I need more evidence 
Um, and it sounds like it's out there. I just need to go and like engage with that material mm-hmm. or whatever and like see more arguments to see if it's something that I would like front and center kind of like push for. But it's like right now, the idea of like getting one sounds great. The only thing I worry about is like the inflation thing, which it sounds like people who are proponents of UBI have answers for that immediately. The other thing is that I don't want it to be the beginning of the gutting of the social safety net. You know, like I would want it to be it a would thing be that, adding to the social safety net. Are you kidding? Right. Me? But I, I it would. But I fear that, like, you know, we can't ignore well, that, like the GOP w- well, is coming some, for like social security. Instead of getting Medicare. social security. Some people security. think it'll be a replacement. The, yeah. Instead of getting system. social security at 65 or 67 now, you would get social security at one. Whatever age. Yeah. Yeah. So I just like, how is it? How I don't understand a lot of people who are in favor of the working class are reflexively against ubi when it just seems like my ignorance of it is definitely not a reflection of it being like a weak policy i really just need to see like more material with it so if you could direct me towards that i'd be open to seeing it maybe by the end of this i will like by the end of the week i would be like a bigger proponent of ubi than you when when people when people talk about how social security is going to go bust they're talking about a demographic shift they're saying listen we're only going to have five workers for every elderly person Mm -hmm. But what they don't mention is that those five workers are all going to control 20 robots. Like they're (laughs) literally going, our workforce is going to be reduced in the future down to a three day work week. Like the human labor is on the out on the decline. So we're going to be able to produce, uh, massively with a a lot fewer workers. And we're going to have to deal with that. I really see UBI is the only way to deal with that. Yeah, this is what you're you're describing the fully automated luxury gay space communism, Adam. That's what I'm asking. Like, are you sure you're not I a know. communist in the closet? Well, look, I, and I'm sure you're aware of this. the The chief complaint against Marxism was he thought we would get socialism once we got a thing called superabundance. My problem is a lot of the socialists they want to do it before you have superabundance. They think you can just create superabundance by organizing society correctly. That's not true. You need this technological component that Marx was very aware of. And I just, I I feel like a lot of people don't realize that we are getting closer and closer to that superabundant situation. And we need to radically restructure our society to deal with it, or it's going to be a lot of it's going to I'm be sorry. like super wealthy and people with no money. The middle class sorry, is going to be gone. Did you just prove Aaron right? You're I know. Marx you're was aware of this. right now. You're like, Marx what was aware of this. So are you on board with Marx? Are you Marxist communist mm-hmm. thing? Well, I, I, obviously, I think Marx had some, some true and interesting things to say. I think that people have used those uh, insights incorrectly to create massive... So you are the one true communist. I agree with you. Well, no, look, because look. there's lots of things Mark says that Adam would disagree with. But yes, okay. obviously. As much as I obviously. want to jump on the Adam being a secret Marxist train. But the, I'm already yeah. on that train. So, so, so look, too. Look, I'm, look, I'm on it. look, if we're talking about something like superabundance, you understand it in, in today because we have like things like AI. Like we see robots. We see videos of robots on YouTube and stuff like that. When Stalin was talking about creating superabundance, the idea that he could do that is laughable. You got to admit, like uh, in some of the communist experiments, they had literally um, like yeah, farmers. They went full employment. Well, yeah, but they had farmers. <laughs> and like, that didn't create superabundance; it created poverty and yeah, yeah and de- the and idea de- of standing and in devastation. line for one yeah. loaf of bread. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, wasn't great. Look, they had they. Uh, Stalin said he was going to get into the steel business, so he told all of his farmers, okay, we're in the steel business now. Melt down your plows. That's not, that's not going to create superabundance. That's going to create famine. Right. So but, it sounds like, Adam, you can be like the vanguard of the like next wave of the American Communist Party because you're like, these, these young communists don't understand the com- concept of superabundance. Like, yeah, just correct them and then you can lead the communist revolution. Hello? That's well, why I'm, look, I'm already thinking you're sounding like a, uh, like a secret communist. A Adam look, is saying, not, listen, we'll do the communist revolution once we all have Star Trek replicators. Then we'll look, talk I'm, about I'm not, it. Look, I'm talk. not opposed to this idea, okay, Aaron? You're, look, I, I'm, I'm interested. Like, if this is a job <laughs> opportunity, I'm thinking maybe. But He's commie curious. I see it more as super capitalism. But <laughs> When it comes to this topic, and I, Adam, I've seen uh, how enthusiastic you are about UBI and... Like, I see where you're going. It just, it gives me the same vibes as Tim Pool seeing a civil war, like, around the corner. Like, mm-hmm. we are so far away from 
being able to like mass produce with AI, wow. with That's machine so learning, like we're so far away, yeah. but there are people who are planning like robots are going to uh, control everything in, in any moment. And it's only going to be five people working like, OK, I, I'm i just I'm so far away from that. Wow. Well, how long? Do you, how, Probably how because many I'm years? more in reality. than. Wow. <laughs> Called out. My well, wait a second. I, it wasn't that long ago when none of us had cell phones in our pockets and social media. I mean, that, yeah, that's but like, that's it's un it's not understanding the jump from like A to Z. You're like, oh my God, it took it took just 50 years until we got from A to B. We're going to get to Z at any day now. Okay, wait, how, not, how long, not, how long like, do you look. think it's going to take, Cherry? And how long do you think Adam thinks it's going to take? I would say, yeah. well, I'm going to mind read Adam. I think Adam mm -hmm. probably assumes that we're going to get there in a lifetime. In his lifetime. <laughs> I'm no, not think, a I'm lifetime. Think, a, like, I'm thinking generation. like 10 years. I'm like. <laughs> oh, shit, even less. So, we're when you, on when the, you say a lifetime, the, do you mean 100 years? Or you mean a generation is like 20 years? What, what, like, what are you? Oh, and you know? I'm, well, I was going to say that he probably thought like 80 years, but. Um, but I you guess think it'll take 80 years 10. to get to the robots making everything, essentially? Yeah. No well, way. I'm we're thinking that that's what he We're 10 years away. I'm, I, we're way more than 80 years away. We're 10 years away, but anyway. 80 years, I can't even, wow. I mean, I think we're more than 10 years away, but I think we're less than 80. I'm going to be the fence-sitting centrist here. I think we're somewhere what, in between. What, uh, okay, the ten. price is right, mo motherfucker. Who just <laughs> I'll say 11 years. <laughs> 11 years, Bob. <laughs> Done. That's a good idea, yeah. Do you have a take, uh, Aaron, on the, techno the technological gain? Actually, like this was sparking a memory that I had of Andrew Yang on the debate stage. And I thought an insightful thing that he said is kind of reframing the conversation about people's fears and the anxiety related to like their jobs being eliminated effectively because of automation. He was saying like, hey, this is your friend, not your enemy. Like we don't want people to have to work checkout lines or whatever, or these jobs like we really should be embracing that. And then you have UBI come in or like social safety net come in and reduce the like not make people resistant to society becoming more automated because that is actually actually the sign of like technological improvement and progress and you need to stop thinking that like my job is going to be taken by an immigrant and you need to start thinking like no my job might actually just be automated and replaced by a robot okay you know it, it also Can puts pressure on businesses to automate faster like why are we having me... businesses hire people to do these jobs nobody wants to do why mm -hmm. if a robot can do it a robot should do it it can't it can't do it that's the problem it cannot do it we do just what? think that it can you probably saw like a, a video of a car driving itself and you think that that exists in the world it doesn't Elon <laughs> musk is going to be facing a crazy lawsuit because for the last like what is it eight almost it, it's coming up on 10 years that he has failed to produce the fully self self-driving car that he had people pay for eight years ago and mm -hmm. he's never going to produce it because he refuses to upgrade the the the, the radars and stuff that he's using because he's mm -hmm. already invested so he's this is why we're not getting there because he is a terrible businessman. He takes technology, he takes engineering, and he drives every company that he's part of Look, right to the fucking so ground. Cherry, you said all of the resources. Innovation. He takes all of the brilliant it's people just, in this it's world not just and he Elon, crushes Look, no, there are no, robots no. that mow the lawn now. There are Listen, robots no. that vacuum no. your house. You're They're wrong. He You're can't all even wrong. make a fully self-driving car. <laughs> no. You're not You're having wrong. a fully automated world in 10 years. Cherry is correct. Elon Musk is personally responsible for stopping the super abundance revolution. Literally, okay. he's responsible for Just everything. Him. Yes. He's well, destroyed okay. the world. I so there are these little robots that they made that they use machine learning and they get them to play soccer. And it's kind of silly, but to me, that's a pretty big indication like how well they can get those little robots to play soccer. If they can get robots to play soccer pretty well based on machine learning. I feel like that could translate to making robots do a lot of other types of jobs. Like, and if they could somehow use machine learning to make robots just be able to walk around in the world, like that's just, really the key. If you can make a robot that can just- We're on the that, verge of that. That's what, what I'm saying. I'm, if you can get a I'm robot saying. that can like, like walk around a house and like have some like understanding of like walls and house and how to navigate that space, then we're there. Until we get there, I don't know. But when we're when we're there, then there's going to be the big explosion. So what I'm saying I think we're is a little we bit closer than 80 years. But we currently have radars that would be able to produce a fully self-driving car. But mm -hmm. it is terrible businessmen. It is ego. It is destroying 
the productivity. We do not have Blame an open it all source. On men. She is, is a man hater. Look, she was right everyone about is the... working against each other because capitalism is actually fucking off the rails in this case. And there's too many resources with one individual who has been having a midlife crisis for like the past 20 years, microdosing. His goal is to fucking colonize Mars. And for the rest of the productivity on the world, in, in this world, he's he's got his finger on it and is just destroying great creative people, great products, a great industry. It, this is why you will not have it anytime soon, even though you might have read up, you might have saw somewhere that we have the technology, that we have the capability, that there is someone who has figured it out. We'll never fucking get there. Not anytime soon with these people. Okay. This in is what some, happened when you fuck with Elon's a woman's fault. Twitter account. <laughs> and I am an Elon hater. So, through and through, but I have every correct reason to do so. So capitalism is bad. Let's uh, go back to this, super this unregulated capitalism. Yeah, because okay. you get people like Elon and okay. Elon Musk. Yeah. Hi, you just listened to a clip from the Sitch and Adams show. If you like what you heard, you can listen to our live show right here on this channel on Sunday, starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And if you want, you can super chat us. We read $20 and up super chats on the show and then do a follow-up stream on the following Tuesday where we read the rest of the unread super chats and interact with fans of the show. Subscribe to this channel right here to listen to the live show or to listen to more of our awesome clips.